Hello, and welcome to another episode of Comic and Us Origins. I'm TJ. And I'm Chris. And I'm Lumpy. And today, we are diving into the origins of Spider-Man. So, this is Spider-Man's first appearance. He debuted in Amazing Fantasy number 15. The cover artist was by Jack Kirby and Steve Dicko. It was released June 5th, 1962. However, the date on the cover is August 1962. I don't know why they do that. The story was written by Stan Lee and Steve Dicko. Penciled by Steve Dicko. Inked by Steve Dicko. Colored by Stan Goldberg. Lettered by Artie Simic. And the editor was Stan Lee. So... 1962, and it's only 12 cents. Like, it didn't go up that much from the 30s and 40s to now? Like, to the 62? I wasn't ready to go in the cover, but now that we're there... God. Oh. Go ahead, I, mean, I, noticed, cover. I, I noticed the 12 cents. I thought it was like, wow, that's really cheap for 1962, right? Yeah, yeah so what were they, 10 cents in the 40s? Right. So they went up 2 cents in 20 years? I wonder like what... Eight bucks. So, so Marvel wasn't around in the 40s, though. No. Right, right, right. So, so I, I wonder, wonder if PC they were was cheaper. Yeah, right. because I'm just curious if they were cheaper because of their... You know what I mean? They had to go up against a bigger... It's not that hard to find out. Company. So where were you going, TJ? Did you have some something else to say before? Yeah, I got someone into the did cover? a cover because now go ahead. <laughs> well, this is our first real origin without having to argue with you, so I can't really. Oh I yeah, you guys don't want to get into that argument real quick. <laughs> There's no need for it. This is a real origin. This is an origin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's this amazing fantasy. Fifteen August. It says twelve cents, and then Spider Man is swinging in. It's the first time they drew him, and he looks great. Spider-Man always looks good. I liked when he has the, the web under his armpits, too. This one has the web un- under his armpits. Yes, I do like that. He's swinging in. He's carrying a guy who looks like your typical, you know, villain. 60s mob villain, maybe. On oh, the building behind him, it looks like, uh, what's his name from the Fantastic Four? Doctor, what is Fantas- his name from the Fan- Doctor yeah, Doom? Dr. Fanta- Dr. Fantastic, it looks like. I don't know. Right? I'm actually not looking at Mr. Fantastic. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Blue suit. Bill- Oh, yeah, that's what yeah. Mr. Fantastic. Yeah. There's, like, four people on the top of the building. There's a guy down a little lower. And there's he's got some word bubbles. And it says, though they the world may mock Peter Parker, the timid teenager, it will soon marvel at the awesome might of Spider-Man. It's good. This was, this was the it, August issue, right? Yeah, yes. August 15th. No, what, what's the cover date? I mean, the, on the cover, oh. what does it say? August. August? Okay. Yeah, 15th. I'm, I'm just bringing up. Detective Comics number 306, which is the same August 1962, 12 cents. Huh. So it really did only go up a couple cents. So. Yeah, from the 40s to yeah. 60s, it, two cents. It's, but it's people were buying comics back then, right? Like, they were selling a ton of comics. They didn't have to raise the price because they were putting them out, probably. I would imagine, I guess. So did you guys cover the bubbles? I, th- yes. I said the two bubbles. I didn't see the bottom bubble yet. Also in this issue, an important message to you from the editor about the new Amazing. Mm-hmm. So first thing about the cover that of note that I found, apparently the guy that Spider-Man is carrying is named Steve, in reference to Steve Dicko. Oh, yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So this is Amazing Fantasy. This is actually this is the first issue where they redid the Amazing Fantasy series, because... Before this, it was called Amazing Adult Fantasy. Oh. Yeah. But, so they... So, put, sounds X-rated. <laughs> no. It's just... A, it was just I, I know. It's just, they were just trying a, to attract. Right. So they changed yeah. a few things in the format, starting with this issue. Like, starting with creating, um, bringing in new hero, weird, weird heroes like Spider-Man. But the format of the comic forehand were only, like, four the five-page comics... So okay. that's why they split Spider-Man into part one and part two in this. Oh, so that's right. why it's cut in half like this. That's also why they said uh, this is important information about the new Amazing, because they changed over the format. Also, they dropped the word adult, because apparently they got a lot of letters from teenagers saying they felt uncomfortable buying a comic that said adult on it. Well, because that automatically triggers the um, adult, you know. Right, yeah. When magazines. I go to purchase okay. a magazine that says adult, you know... Yeah, it, it just sounds seems, like X-rated. 
Amazing Adult Fantasy. If I said, hey, did you guys check out the new magazine, Amazing Adult Fantasy? I would be like, what are you reading? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I agree with that. I mean, I yeah. think it was a good I just, drop. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm not disagreeing. I just thought it was yeah. an interesting note. Yeah. This, uh, the comic is also approved by the Comics Code Authority. We still haven't covered that, but just wanted people to know that. Also, I wanted to just mention what else is in this story with Spider-Man, because... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So there's an, a story called The Bell Ringer, which is about some guy who rings a bell for when stuff's happening, like bad stuff, and then a volcano ex- is about to explode, and he goes up to the volcano and rings the bell despite it erupting all around him to warn everybody. That's okay. that one. Man in a Mummy Case is about a man who hides in a mummy case from like the security guards, and the mummy is angry about it, and he chases him around, and then he goes back into the, and then the guy goes back into the mummy case and ends up back in ancient Egypt as a slave. So, ah. <laughs> and then there are Martians Among Us. It sounds exactly what it is. It Martians evade. It's space. It's it was inspired by a Twilight Zone episode that has the Batmobile in it. What Martians Among Us? Okay, if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but the, it's red. Yeah, the spaceship coming in yeah. actually looks like the bat would be on red. And before we go into the story <laughs> proper itself, there is an ad on the second page that says, An amazing invention. Magic art reproducers. Draw the first day. If you can't draw, a straight line. You can draw your family, friends, and anything from real life. Which And it's weird because the, <laughs> they have this like woman in her underwear posing. Yeah. So... so and if you uh, scroll down, there's a, a drawing of a woman completely naked on a chair. Yeah. You see it? Yep. Yeah. It's, it's, we're going to get this so we can talk girls that are taking their clothes off. Are you sure this isn't the PSA that we were supposed to do? <laughs> you sure this isn't the adult <laughs> fantasy? I thought yeah, this is the that. adult fantasy part of it. In any case, let's dive into Spider-Man. Before I actually said that you couldn't really mess Spider-Man up, I said it in one of our older podcasts, um, this first Spider-Man drawing in there is pretty bad. What do you mean? Oh, the one in Shadow? Yeah, do you see it? No, no, no. The one next to the word Spider-Man. Oh, well. Do you see it? He's all scrawny and like looks like somebody scribbled yeah, I don't know there. how much of that is, you know, just time weathered the comic, too. Is that what it is? I don't like, know. It looks if like you see the color, color the, right. you, can see, you can see the colors are smeared off of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think this is just an old comic and like, well, you're reading it on the app, right? I am. And how does it look on yours? So I'm actually comparing them right now. So which one are you looking at? So the first page at the top is a Spider-Man and then in the at the very top, there's just a small straw on the Spider-Man. Yeah. So in app, it looks really weird. Okay. But so what one are you guys reading on? Yeah, we're reading the original. Yeah. It's super enhanced, like, redrawn. Like, I wonder if it was a reprint. I, I can send you a picture of it. Oh, wow, that's not... That's weird. That's not what I was looking for. Did you find it? No. Or you're on something else? He's on adult fantasy. <laughs> no, I want to... Um, I, I want them to... Oh, okay, I found it. No, that's not it either. That is... That's a redone issue. You see it? Yeah. Oh, I see. It's a remake. Yeah. They um they released Spider Man they they remastered it essentially. Okay. Yeah, kind of released it on its own. We're reading from the actual. Um, yeah. So, so I just sent you a picture of what mine looks like in app. So it mine looks similar to what yours does in app. If I'm if I had to guess. Yeah. See, it's, it's a little more. Enhanced, it, it does but. still look weird, Uncle Chris, but the colors aren't like. Oh, uh, okay. You see? Do you see it? I think no. I didn't get his message yet. I don't know why. Oh, there it goes. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think it's <laughs> because of how old the comic was. Yeah. Yeah, it still is a weird, funky drawing of him there in that corner. Yeah, but I don't think it's as weird, weird as yours but, is. Right. Well, those pictures look great, though. Yeah, they um, re- they redid the entire comic because there was yeah. actually two. You could choose from two. Just all fantasy, the Spider-Man version, or oh, okay. the the original version. But I th- went with the original because it's more interesting. I must have two. I didn't even know there was two, but yeah. Anyway, can I get back into this now? Sure. Okay. We waiting for maybe. So the narrator talks about how in the comic book industry they refer to superheroes as the long underwear characters. Is that true? <laughs> 
I don't know. I'll tell you what they said. I'm not <laughs> in the comic really book. They really say, oh, let's draw these long underwear characters. I guess. They must, because why would they put it in here? Right. Anyway, they're apparently a dime a dozen, but not Spider-Man. He's a bit different. Anyway, we really open with a bunch of school people plan on going to a dance, and they're like, we need one more. Let's ask Peter Parker over there if he wants to go to the dance. And the other people are like, nah, he's a bookworm and a wallflower. He doesn't know how to dance, and he's all sad about it. And I don't know what the panel is with the Shadow Spider-Man and the Shadow Spider. Is that foreshadowing? I don't know. I'm not sure. In any case... We cut from there to Peter being woke up by his Uncle Ben and then having dinner, breakfast getting served by Aunt May. And he's happy with his, his aunt and aunt. And he goes to school and the teachers like him. So it's, everything's okay there. But the teenagers, huh? Those darn teenagers. Peter Parker goes up to ask girl on a date and she's like, no, Peter, for the umpteenth time, I'm not going out. You're, you're not like Flash Thompson over here. And then Flash is like, yeah, you got good taste. Get out, get out of here, Peter. And then they go, they go off and drive in a car, and no wait, I'm sorry. And that then we cut to a new scene where Peter asks a bunch of uh, kids to go to a science exhibit with him, and he's like, "We're not going to that. Go enjoy your atom smashers, Peter." And then they all drive off, leaving Peter by himself. He starts to lament, and he's like, "Someday I'll show them." And he, as he goes to the science exhibit, experiments in radioactivity, open to the public. That's not you know foreshadowing or ominous in any way (laughs) and so the scientists have an experiment and in the middle of the experiment a tiny spider comes down and gets in between the experiment and gets zapped and as it dies it lashes it out and bites the nearest thing to it which happens to be Peter and then it dies and then Peter sees the spider says why is it burning and glowing that's weird. Oh, I feel strange. And he's going away, and the scientists make fun of him. He's up. He must have a weak stomach. And as he goes out. And then he goes outside, looking at his fingers that seem to be glowing for some reason. And a car almost hits him, and Peter jumps on the building. And he's like, and I guess this is people he knows, because he says, look at that nerd. He won't daydream anymore. And But Peter finds he can crawl up a building, and he's such growing up. And then a little kid sees him, and he tells his mom, and his, his mom said he's not allowed to watch horror movies anymore. And he gets to the top and he crushes a pipe I accidentally. And then he learns he can, he has super strength and he can walk across lines. And now he's got to make a plan. And no one has anything to say. <laughs> I do like that. Um, the, the orig- What was the Spider Man? Uh, the original one that came the out ori- in like the 90s. Oh, the, What's his name? the uh, Green Goblin one. What? Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire sticks to this story pretty good, this origin story. So we were talking about this earlier, actually. I was talking to my wife about it, and I'm like, you know, reading this, the origin story of Spider-Man, for what most people know, is not this. Like, this, like, him being picked on at school and stuff is not what they've done with Spider-Man now. Like They kind of do. Flash Thompson's always around. Penis Parker, he calls him Penis Parker now and stuff. Yeah, in the, in the newer one though, they kind of become friends though. Yeah, it's not as getting, but right. The other thing is, is like bullying back then was a lot different than now. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's hard, but um, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. Other than that, what you're getting into right now, I don't have much to say about. It's the next part that I have to talk about. Okay. I just felt like I was talking to myself for, like, the last five minutes, but okay. I mean, you're just listening. This Most of what you were just saying is basic common knowledge, I feel like. that's Everybody kind of knows that part about how he gets bit by the spider, yeah. and then he could jump, crawl. You know what I mean? He has all of that. All right. Fine. Let's go. Let's get into the stuff that... No one really knows about. So Peter's like he's got he's got to figure something out, and he passes. I guess they're just wrestling outside because he's just passing by, and he sees a sign that says a hundred dollars to the man who can stay in the ring three minutes with Crusher Hogan, and he looks like your stereotypical <laughs> like circus strongman. Yep, yeah, bald head. And so Peter goes home and he changes his clothes, but he's, he knows he's gonna. He doesn't want them to know who he is, so he puts on a mask and he goes and he challenges Crusher Hogan. Does he put on a mask, or does he yeah. tie his shirt around his face? It's like a scarf or <laughs> something, right? Isn't it? It's like it, it covers his face completely. I have no idea how he can breathe or see. He must use <laughs> his spidey senses to get where he's going, because there's no eyes. Maybe it's like pantyhose or something. 
Yeah. It's pretty. I was impressed. It does look like net like. It. it looks a little net like. I wonder if it's maybe it's one of them shirts with all the little holes in them. You know, like they used to wear. I'm trying to see what yours looks like. Uh, yeah, so mine looks exactly the same. That's how they drew yeah. it. That's how they enhanced it too. Okay, well, Peter gets in the ring with Crusher, and he doesn't even hit him. He just like jumps over him, puts him on his shoulders, climbs yeah, the pole, carries him around a little bit. Yeah, and and Hogan just gives up, and it's like, and every all the hikes. crowds. And the crowd's like, wow, that's great. And then the carny looking guy's like, hmm, this character might be what I'm looking for. And he comes and he offers him a fortune to be in his, sh- to do, s- he's a TV producer and he wants to, for Spider-Man to be with the act or whatever. And he wants him to be on Ed Sullivan show. Yeah. Pot reference culture. Later that home, he goes home and Aunt May comes in and gives him some crackers or something and he's like oh my family but only if they knew i was spider-man <laughs> and then he goes to work building his uh web shooters and his suit and did he sew it himself like i don't get where a suit like it looks like he just made it out of like thin air i mean it set <laughs> it doesn't go into that and i also am always so confused about the web spitters why so he creates this this isn't something that his body puts out. Yeah, no, they, they're. Oh no, no, he's always created it until the till the Tobey Maguire movie. He created it. Yeah, no, that's always been continuity. He creates yeah. the web shooters. Yeah, and my my only question with that is, if he can create that, he doesn't need to be Superman for money. I, I know things change. As well, become, I'm well, just saying. Before that before you, this, before you continue. He's Spider Man, not Superman. Yeah, you just call him Superman. T Dick all Damn, we're all. I want to call him something. I want to call him Wonder Woman. All right, that's what I want to call him. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just like in my mind. I and I always knew he created the web spinners, but for some reason, I always thought that the the stuff that actually came out of them was produced by him. Body. But he made these things to be able to. Shoot him. No, but he I'm always like, he always come creates a compound that makes super sticky web. In this case, it's super cement or something, they say. Yeah, that's a basically It's cement. funny. I was recently watching the newest Spider-Man movie, and when Tobey Maguire squirts it out of his wrist, they get all grossed out. And they're like, how did that even happen? <laughs> <laughs> so speaking I gotta of, watch them again. So speaking of the... Um, Sue, it says in one of the notes on the, on the fandom page that Peter Parker and his spectacular Spider-Man number 60 clarifies that Peter didn't design his costume from scratch. Instead, it had, he modified a pair of dance skins to make his now, costume. I believe at one point with the change in of the origins that um, Aunt May makes it for him, doesn't she at one point? No, I think you're thinking of Superman because... Really? Because... It, yeah, what's yeah, see, Ma- that's why Ma- I said Superman. Ma-, 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 Ma can't, I don't remember her actual first name, does make Superman's... Okay, maybe I am thinking of Superman now. Yeah. Anyway, back to the story. So, yeah, he's got his suit, he's testing out his things, this is where we learn that it's cement compound, and he does it, and then he's on the ceiling, and he says he's ready to introduce Spider-Man to the world, and then this, it, this comic tells us it's continued after the next page. And then we get an amazing new home training plan in air conditioner and refrigeration. Yep. And then part two of the, the origin of Spider-Man. And he's in a film studio being filmed. He's crawling on the wall. Everyone's amazed. He uses his web shooters and everybody's loving his new thing. And he's like, people are trying to give him movie deals and stuff like that. He's like super, super, super famous right now. Right. Which yeah, yeah. doesn't come up again, as far as I know. They don't? Well, yeah, that's... Like, and, like, like I mean, he, every, sure, he's, like, in the papers and stuff, but, like, they don't say he's, like, he was on TV and stuff in any of the other comics that I know of. No, no I don't know. So I think either. after he does this, and then, and then what happens in the future, I think it kind of changes who he is, and he stays out of that spotlight as best he can. Right, well, he yeah. wasn't trying to be a superhero. He was trying to be, you know, just make money on this. But, uh, you know, exactly the, the problem. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. yeah, he's getting very full of himself and egotistical, which comes up right here as he walks out from away from the people trying to get him to do business with them. And some thief is running away from a cop and the, th- and the cop says, stop. And Spider-Man says, that's not my problem. And lets the guy get away. He gets in the elevator and he's like, whew, the guy said, I can, that 
thank God that goon didn't stop me. And then the cop's like, why do you stop him? He's like, that's your job. I don't stop people. And then he leaves. Probably should have stopped him. Yep. And then a few hours later, oh, look, Aunt May and, and Uncle Ben give him a, the, the new microscope he's been wanting. It. Isn't that Man, sweet? That's so good to him. He loves his Aunt <laughs> May and Uncle Ben. I hope nothing ever happens to them, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're so what's the word they are like doting like, parents no no like they're the story's calculating what's the word where they're just like tr- trying to they're, foreshadow they're, not even foreshadowing they're like they're nailing it in like the, the, uh, yeah, they're what's pushing, going to happen yeah pushing the love for uncle ben right on you yeah they're like yeah. they're like yeah look at all this this is going whoo anyway in the days that come to follow after that, Spider-Man continues his act, and he's in the paper all over the place. And yeah, it's apparently happy. he's a movie, he's a star. Yeah. People love Spider-Man. And then one evening, when he's going home, he sees a police card outside of his house. And he goes up, and the police officer says, your uncle has been shot. Murdered! He does say that. And then and he's like, Uncle Ben, dead. No, it can't be! And then the cop goes on to tell him stuff he shouldn't tell him about, you know, yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This He's is, trapped uh, in Acme Warehouse right now at the waterfront. We'll get him. <laughs> yeah. So he tells him where the guy is, and and he and he also tells him his aunt's next door. So the guy tried to break in uh, into Peter's house, and then Uncle Ben got in the way, and the guy shot him. So I skipped over that. So it's a different, a little different origin than the origin that everyone else knows. So that's why right. I wanted to explain. But, I mean, that. it's it's close though. It's close. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter where it happens. It's just that it happens. Right. So Peter is angry. He gets in his, goes, puts in his Spider-Man outfit on, and he goes after the guy. He swings across town, but and he knows that the warehouse that the guy is hiding out is is like a trap, and the cops ain't going to be able to get to him because they're going to pick him off one at a time. But he can go in through through the ceiling, and he does, and he confronts the murderer, and the murderer tries to run away, but Spider-Man jumps in front of him. And then the guy tries to shoot him, but he he uses his web to cover the gun so he can't use it. Then he punches him in the face, and then he goes to pick him up, and his hat falls off. And oh no, it was the guy he didn't stop before. If he, he would have stopped tell, him, he had a hat on. Yeah, he couldn't tell because he had a hat on. Uh, All he had to do was was help that police officer, <laughs> and this would have never happened. Yeah, it's his fault. Man, it's all his fault, and he knows it. And then he, the cops, like, look, look at that. And then they see that the guy, the guy is hanging from the ceiling there, and it's him. Oh wow! And but then Peter's the short distance away. He's crying. It's all his fault. And then the narrator is the one that says, "With great power comes great responsibility." So it wasn't even Uncle Ben; it was Stan Lee. I was yeah. gonna say that's <laughs> the first time that line was used. Right? Yep. Yep. And so a legend is born, and a new name is added to the roster of those who make the world fantasy the most excited of all. Be sure to see the next issue of Amazing Fantasy for further amazing exploits of America's most different new teenage idol, Superman. The end. Sp- Spider-Man, you said Superman. You guys okay. suck. No one gives a crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so, they were really pushing this. They expected him to take off. Like, this was the... Uh, they were putting they, all their eggs They were the wrong. They, they were not wrong. No, no, they, they, they made a good choice there, but that, yeah. they just... You could tell that this is definitely they. This was their their you know their their shining spotlight here. And one when of the s- one of one of the later ads later on when they're talking about it, they're like if you write us enough letters, we'll maybe even put two Spider Man stories in here if you want. <laughs> so. When Stanley got this on his desk the first time, he was like, "This is it. This is our yep. this is our here's, ticket. Here's Superman. We, we got here's this Batman. one. Yep. Yep." Yeah, this is they knew and what they had. I mean, I gotta be honest, it's a great yeah. comic. It really is. It's it, it's it, something it is. one shot. It's really good. Yeah, and even over the years, the origin has not changed that much. It's no. just a solid story. So it's like it really all, all the basic elements are still there. I understand and why they pulled crazy. the he got famous thing out of it. <laughs> yeah, because that's that, 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 that's that, that, that. Yeah, that kind of brings the comic down for me. Honestly, yeah, me it too. kind of. You don't need it. It's just pointless, and it kind of breaks the character a little bit. I think well, the just great thing show about that it, he though, that he didn't want any responsibilities and all this crap. You know, he doesn't even try to take it over until Uncle Ben gets killed. <laughs> right. That's what I mean. The great thing about it is they took it away in this comic. Like they yeah. they took it away. Like it wasn't. It right. was just a use to to kind of show his a little bit of arrogance first. Yeah. Right. Well, that's why I think just the wrestling scene is enough for it for that. I though. agree. 
You don't need the whole, you know, paparazzi side of things in there right. to do is it. Is that in any of the movies? No. The only the, re- is. only the wrestling is. That's what I mean, the wrestling. Yeah, uh, it's like yeah. Macho Man Randy Savage. Yeah, and Which wrestling. movie is it? Spider-Man it's 1. The, yeah, it's the... Uh, the first Toby one with Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Tobey Maguire one. Okay. Hey, yeah, that's hey. what I was trying to figure out. I was telling Cordy, I'm like, this is definitely in one of the movies, but I yeah. couldn't remember which movie. Yeah, and after he the fights- wrestling... And after the wrestling match, he this is where the scene happens. Right, they he does skip it. all that famous stuff. And yes, yeah. right. Macho Man looks the best he's ever looked in that movie. He's huge. Yes, he that. did. <laughs> yeah, yes, he did. He looked amazing in it. Bone saw. It's been so long since I've seen those ones. His name was Bone Saw. <laughs> yeah, Bone Saw. Oh. Yeah, they're good movies. I mean, the third one's garbage, but <laughs> yeah, it falls apart a little bit. But I mean, and because we from the '90s Spider Man, that Venom story was awesome, and then it it just it was not good in Spider Man no. Three. <laughs> no, but the newest Spider Man that came out, like where where had all three Spider Man, was really good. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, cool. I, That's how I watched some of that. Thing. I like the newer ones a lot too. I still think yeah. that the original Tobey Maguire one was better. Like, well, I, I mean, since they put Tobey Maguire in those new movies, it kind of made everything canon. I yes, think. Yeah, yeah, it makes I like every, that. Yeah. yeah, it makes everything better. Uh, it was good. Yeah, it was a good choice. It confused a lot of people who don't know, you know, a lot of the stories or only knew Spider-Man. Though. They were, you know, the new Spider-Man. And people were like, hey, what the heck is this crap? But I liked it. I thought it was good. <laughs> it was good. It was well done. So this one, appearing in Spider-Man. It says the masked Marvel slash Spider-Man, Peter Parker. That's it. First appearance. The masked Marvel. Aunt May first appearance. It says Uncle Ben first appearance death. <laughs> I mean, he does come back. <laughs> he does, but yeah. Flash Thompson first appearance. Liz Allen first appearance. Unnamed. She's, yeah, she's uh, not named. This one says the burglar first appearance. So apparently the burglar is going to be back. Yeah, they keep come. They retackle this origin like seven times. Oh, uh, right, right. Yeah, I didn't even think about it. Raymond Warren, P- Peter's teacher's first appearance, the NYPD. Bernard O'Brien first appearance, radioactive spider first appearance and death, Midtown High students first appearance, Seymour Riley unnamed, Dr. Ever Eric Schwinner first skipped appearance. skipped Sally Avril too. Oh, Sally Avril. Yeah, but it doesn't say anything about her. But it's got a little arrow next to her name. Uh-oh, I clicked it. I don't know why why'd I clicked you, it. Why'd you click it? I don't, don't know. Click. Whoops. It just took don't me back click. to the beginning anyway. Crusher Hogan doesn't have any, any first appearance next to his name. Baxter Bigelow first appearance. Chet Huntley is unnamed, and Ed Sullivan gets mentioned. Why did you skip Matt Schiffman? This one even has television producer first appearance. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see him. I was trying to. There's a lot of stuff there, and then <laughs> races, races and species, humans and spiders. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to go through all the locations? Because there's a ton of them. You want me to do it? I can do it. Yeah, go for it. Uh, locations: Earth, United States, America, New York, New York City, Queens, Flushing Meadows, Corona Park, New York Hall of Science. First appearance: For Forest Hills, Aunt May's house. First appearance: Mid- Midtown High School. First appearance: Manhattan Acme Warehouse. First appearance: Television Studio. First appearance: You can do the items. Oh, it's it says Spider Man's red and blue suits. First appearance and Spider Man's web shooters. First appearance. It's everything's first appearance. Yeah, yeah. Because this is called Comics and Us Origins, <laughs> except for the wrestler, <laughs> Crusher Hogan. Crusher Hogan's been in everything. Just on name, but it's been in everything. Okay. It does say say seek chronology for Crusher Hogan. <laughs> oh, I clicked it. It just takes you to what panel he's in. I don't need all that. What, somebody really worked hard on this one. Yeah, someone really liked this comic. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I, I agree. It's a great comic. So. All right. Um, is that it? I don't know. Is that it? That's all I, I got. So. It's, it's, all right. Well, I'm just going to go to the comic. first Spider-Man. What's that? I said it's a good comic. What else you want us to say? Yeah, there's no. Yeah, we're, we're, we usually take a lot longer when we complain about shit and stop yeah. you because we're like, wait, what happened? No way. Why is that going on? Um, yeah, and this one so, didn't have that, so I think it was good. So I just I, I went to the top of the first Spider-Man jokes, and it says, "Why is Spider-Man so good at comebacks? Because with great power comes great response ability." Huh. The, some of them are really bad. You know what Spider-Man's side job is? <laughs> a web, web developer. <laughs> <laughs> Guess who missed Spider-Man's homecoming? Uncle Ben. Oh, ow. That's mm. enough. That's enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that, was that a joke? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. No, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was a statement. Yeah, that was a statement. It like, says, Guess who missed Spider-Man homecoming? Uncle Ben. That's what it said. I don't know if that was a uh, joke, but okay. Yeah. 
I don't. I don't like that. I, I think we're done with that morbid, uh, that morbid joke there. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.